Welcome back to Project Electrolyte, my 1972 Plymouth satellite that I'll be fitting a Model S Ludicrous drive unit in the rear of this car. I've had to deconstruct the car so far. This is dropping the rear axle. You can see the drive shaft hanging down there still. I dropped it down on some jack stands, ended up cutting the leaf springs with a plasma torch. Since everything's kind of rusty, that was the quickest way to get the big parts out of my way. And then I roll it out back. It's on the side of my house. I'm starting a little bit of a collection here. I'll end up either selling some of these parts or scrapping them. I'm not sure what people need yet, but I don't want to just scrap everything right off the bat. Usually makes a mess. This car is old. Not much has been done to it since it was new. Uh, this is a combination of road dirt and undercoating and whatnot. I started to play around with the uh, the rear subframe mounting. Uh, I think I might have to reinforce the existing frame, so I'm making a cardboard template. Just kind of clamped it up there and used a drywall cut off cut around tool and just traced the frame. It cut the cardboard real easy. And this piece wasn't long enough, so I just added a little more to it. Got it trimmed up on top and bottom. Then I. Uh, had a large piece of Tyvek, so I just laid that on the Tyvek and kind of made some measurements about every inch to get the general dimensions. That way I could transfer this over to Fusion 360. And uh, I'm not the greatest at CAD, but I'm, I'm trying here. Got all the measurements transferred over, kind of made a, what I think the subframe might look like. Not having the Model S dry, uh, subframe here yet, this is kind of uh, some guesses, what my gussets might look like. I know it's going to mount outside of my frame rails, so this is potentially what it might do. I did cut out a trial piece on my CNC plasma cutter. Uh, I took some adjustments and I made the changes in Fusion. Got the interior gutted for the most part. I still have the dash headliner. In the back of the rear seat installed but uh, I just needed to get the floor cleaned out so I could start welding in the subframe connectors. I'll be doing lots more dash work in the future. Here's a look at the subframe connector. It's kind of just tacked in place. Uh, it's a lot of welding. The full length will be welded to the floor. Lots of gap filling and adjustments as I go. Here's kind of the rear of the car. Uh, it has a lot of surface rust. Luckily, the undercoating protected most of the underbody of this car. And this is looking up into the wheel well. It's 14 inches of tire clearance. I could get a few more inches if I mini tub it, but I'm not sure I'm going to benefit from that, the way the Model S unit mounts. Here I'm dropping the front suspension. Torsion bars are removed. I've disconnected the upper control arms. Got both sides down, they're just kind of hanging there on the lower control arms. Uh, I could drop the whole engine just like this, but I decided to take the weight off as much as possible, so I dropped the brakes and upper and lower control arms. I just disconnected them all. This is when they were just hanging from the steering. I did leave the steering hooked up. I left the gearbox installed. Removed the transmission, this little 904 transmission. It was easy to access, so I just unbolted it, lowered the car down on uh, my little cart here. I don't have a tranny jack, so this worked out pretty well. Lowered it down, disconnected it the rest of the way, and lifted the car back off. Then I had to disconnect all the uh, wiring and hoses from the engine, pulled out the radiator. I'm sure anybody who's worked on old cars has done this before. I decided to just put my engine stand on the back of the motor at this point with the transmission out of the way. That made it pretty easy and then I just lowered the car down onto the engine stand until I knew it was supporting the engine. Disconnected the four bolts from the K-frame and then just lifted the car right off of it. Those engines complete. Um, all I did was cut the exhaust and disconnect wires and hoses. But otherwise, it's complete. Still has the alternator, air conditioning, power steering, gearbox. Everything else is complete. Kind of the opposite of the way the car was built. 
it was probably ready to go when they put it up into place. Now I can just roll it out of the way. And you can see uh, it's pretty grimy under here. Surface rust, some rust holes, lots of undercoating, grime, debris. Started a little bit of rust repair. Anywhere it's really soft and I can push right through, I'm cutting it out and putting in new metal. I have lots of uh, 14 gauge sheet metal laying around and just been cutting little pieces. Tack it all the way around until it's complete and then grind it smooth. I did that under the driver's side. This is right below the master cylinder. There was a hole. Uh, there's one in the rear of the car. Um, most of the under though is, is pretty good. It had so much undercoating. Everything was protected. This has been scraped and degreased and I'll still need to do a little more prep work before I paint it. That's what it looks like every time I scrape the undercoating. I just kind of heat it up, scrape it off. It's Tedious, but not too bad. Then I sand and wire wheel and flap disc and grind and I'm trying to get it as clean as possible before I degrease and, and uh, finish painting. Outside of the car looks good. The paint job is really nice. I didn't do it. I bought the car this way, but I did have to remove the hood and fenders to get to the inner fenders and the engine bay. Lots of cleanup and repair to do under here. The battery kind of caused a lot of rust, and then the hood hinge area rusted through. It was kind of a stacked, reinforced metal area, but it just held the water, and you could see it just kind of bubbled right through. So I cut out the whole area until I could get to some clean metal to weld to. It wasn't, wasn't too bad. Then I just fit some new 14-gauge uh, metal again that I had laying around. Got it to fit as close as possible so the welding is easier. And then it's just a whole bunch of tack welds. Hold it in with a magnet. Start tacking all around. Kind of zigzag back and forth like you're mounting a wheel. And I uh, kept, kept doing this process until it was completely filled in. And then I just ground it flush. If you zigzag a lot, you don't get any warping. So it's, it's really square right here. I ended up drilling and then putting the uh, the mount for the hinge behind it. And then more reinforcements uh, to the rust in the front. I filled in all the holes that I won't need. I'll just re-drill if I need to mount wires. I've been doing it a phase at a time, so here's kind of a before and after little two-face look here. I've been using a uh, hammered finish paint that I really like to use in this area of the car because you can grind it down, sand it, um, and then just paint right over it. It blends right in. It holds up a long time. I've had really good luck with this paint. I'll probably end up doing the whole underside of the car with it and uh, go back and touch it up anytime. Kind of the battle station here. Every sanding, grinding, chipping tool that I have and then welding everything back in. I've got everything off the firewall here steering, wiper motor, brake, master cylinder, fan, everything's gone. Got it all prepped. And that's where I'm out in the car. Today I'll probably go out and remount the fenders, start some reassembly so I don't take up my whole garage with parts. But I was able to make a trip down to Oceanside. This is Stealthy V's shop. I wanted to go see my drive unit that I ordered. He'll be shipping it uh, pretty soon. This is the rear subframe. You can see the red Brembo's big heavy-duty uh, axle shafts. It'll have all the brakes, everything I need to, to drive. And this is the drive unit. Ludicrous Model S unit. He had it apart because he was putting in his control module, the Stealth EV controller. There's a close-up of the inverter. Again, the Ludicrous has the red circuit boards, which is kind of cool. I was glad I was able to see it while I had it open. And this is his car. It's a WS6 uh, Trans Am that he put the same rear suspension in. So I wanted to take a look at how he mounted it. That was just kind of a spacer block. He used a big heavy duty piece of angle in the front. It, it turned out really square, really nice. I'll be doing something similar on it. And batteries. He built this battery box for the front. That holds 12 of the 16 modules. Uh, probably very similar to what I'll be doing. That's where it's at. 
next phase is a little reassembly and I'll start uh, getting ready to mount the rear subunit.